Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to downgrade iOS 14 beta back to iOS 13. And the best part is that this tutorial will work for every single iOS 14 beta release. It doesn't matter whether you're watching this now when iOS 14 beta one is current or in the future when iOS 14 GM is out, the last final beta, these exact same steps will work for you. Now, a lot of tutorials are spreading the easy way to downgrade back to iOS 13. However, that does not work. Apple blocks that method going from one major release to another. For example, iOS 14 back to iOS 13. It only works going from incremental update back to another incremental update. For instance, iOS 13.6 beta back to 13.5.1. But again, won't work for iOS 14 back to iOS 13. Chances are good it will result in something like a boot loop or you losing your data permanently. So having said that, this tutorial is a little bit more involved. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible and you only need access to one thing, a computer with an internet connection. If you don't have one, you actually don't need to own a computer. You can borrow a friend's, family members, whatever it happens to be, just beg, plead, again, borrow, and get your hands on one. You only need it the once, and it only takes a handful of minutes to actually accomplish this. And if you can't get it now, then just wait until you can, because I guarantee it is worth it to go back if you are experiencing iOS 14 beta woes and regret with any bugs you may be encountering. So having said that, let's just delve straight in. I wanna show you guys that we are running iOS 14 beta, if you couldn't tell by the widgets, which are a dead giveaway, but inside of settings, followed by general, about this iPhone 10 confirms it is running iOS 14.0 beta. Okay, so now at this point, I want you guys to navigate to downgradeios.com in your browser of choice. In addition to having full written steps and the proper file path to your backup to modify it to work on iOS 13, it will also have the download that you need. So scroll down to the big download button and click on it. Then the site will gather all of the necessary resources and redirect you one last time. Now, please at this point, consider subscribing. It really helps us out. But what I want you guys to do is look for the one thing where it says click here to be redirected to download. So do that and then you're going to select your device. Now I have an iPhone 10 global. So I'm selecting iPhone and now I'm scrolling down again and I am looking for iPhone 10 global, which is right here. And then download one of the green IPSWs. If you're watching this video at a later point, it might not be 13.5.1 for you. It might be iOS 13.6. Whatever it happens to be, you can only restore to the green IPSWs, not the red ones. Those are the ones that Apple is no longer signing. So just click on it and then click download. It's the blue button down below, below all of the release information. Now I can almost guarantee if you encounter any sort of issues or complications or errors inside of either iTunes or Finder, it's because you downloaded the incorrect IPSW for your device. And if that's the case for you and you're having problems downloading the proper IPSW, then on this website, you can navigate to identify my device in the top menu bar and follow the steps here and it will help you there. And then you can download the proper IPSW. Okay, so having said that, we can go ahead and set this off to the side. We are going to need to return to that main article. It's the first link in the description, which is down in the description a little bit, but it's also just downgradeios.com. So we're going to set this off to the side. Like I said, we will need it later. And now I want you guys to connect your device to your computer via a standard USB cable if you have yet to. And once you've done that inside of either iTunes or Finder on your Mac, navigate to your your device screen and you will receive a message asking you to trust the connection if you have yet to. So on my Mac, I'm clicking trust on my iPhone here. I'm tapping on trust on the pop-up and I'm inputting my device's passcode. This is just to establish the secure connection between the two. And I'm just going to make this screen a little bit bigger here so we can see what we're working with. Now, at this point, if you guys aren't too concerned about maintaining your data, you can kind of just skip this segment, refer down to the timestamps in the description.
description for that, but I highly recommend doing this. And this part of the tutorial will be the same on both Windows and Mac OS. What I want you guys to do is click where it says backup now under the backup section. Now you have the option to encrypt your local backup if you want. This way you will actually maintain all health data on your device. If you uncheck this option or you don't check it rather and you just leave it unchecked, which it is by default, then you will not have your health data. Anything that you've obtained or collected through your Apple Watch, your workouts, none of that will remain. So you have to encrypt it if you want it. And it will just ask you to set a password here. And it's just something that you need to remember when actually restoring to it. Now me, I'm just going to uncheck it because I don't need it. And I'm just going to input my device's passcode there when it asks me to. And uh, now it is no longer encrypted or it's actually going through the decryption process. But like I said, if you care about that kind of thing, you need to encrypt your local backups and you can do that on both Windows and Mac. And side note, it can take a little bit of time to encrypt it and it does vary based on how much data you're actually backing up. But at this point, you can click right where it says backup now and it's just going to go through the backup process. Quickly on my iPhone, I just thought of something I wanted to add I want to add a note on it just to show you guys that this works and we'll get our note back. So we will get this back. Okay. So I'm clicking on done or tapping on done and I'm just going to back up once more now that I have made that change and it will save this note and we will have it. and it will save this note and we will have it. Okay, so now that that backup is done, what I want you guys to do is click on restore iPhone, but before you do, you have to hold down. All right, and now that that backup is complete and you double check that it says it's backed up, it'll say last backup to this Mac or to this computer, and then it'll say the specific time. Ensure that it says that. And at this point, before we can actually downgrade or restore back to iOS 13, you need to go inside of the settings application, tap on your name up at the top, AKA your Apple ID, and then tap right in where it says find my, and you need to turn this off. So under find my iPhone at the top, I'm toggling this off and it asks you to input your device's passcode. So do that now. Okay, so now that mine is off, we can proceed. Don't worry, you can re-enable this later after you go back to iOS 13. This is just a security precaution put in place by Apple to prevent the use of lost or stolen devices. Okay, so at this point, now we are ready. So if you're on a Windows-based PC, I want you guys to hold down the shift key. If you're on a Mac, I want you to hold down the option or alt key. So Windows shift, Mac option or alt, and you're going to left click on restore iPhone and it will pop up with a screen like this. And you need to select your device's IPSW that we downloaded previously. So just double click it to select it. And then it will state that it will erase your iPhone to iOS 13.5.1 or whatever the latest version is when you're watching this video. So go ahead and click on the restore button. And again, as long as you backed up, you will be fine. And it may ask you to input your device's passcode in just a second. Do so if it does. Otherwise, it's just going to go through the process and actually downgrade us back to iOS 13. Now, the general progress for this is reflected on your iOS device, not so much on your computer. So if you're at all curious, as to which stage of the process you're on, refer to the progress bar underneath the Apple logo that will appear in a little bit. And of course, this can take an excess of 30 minutes. So don't be surprised if it takes longer than 30 minutes to actually perform this downgrade. Just give it time, be patient, do not unplug it, do not interface with your device whatsoever. And also I wanted to state that this entire restore or downgrade process has been sped up in post-production. I just wanted to show you guys and not cut anything out of this downgrade, but yeah, this has been sped up, so I'll be back once it's done. All right, so here we go. The downgrade process will finish. Your device will appear as though it is rebooting. It will come up with another Apple logo and a progress bar beneath it. That's just the on-device consolidation step. And your computer should say that your iPhone has been restored to factory settings and is restarting and to please leave it connected. At this point, theoretically, you could disconnect it, but I recommend just adhering it to the guidance on your computer. Just leave it connected, don't touch it, and it will come up shortly, and we will resume the steps we need to take to get our data back onto our devices.
Okay, and here we go. We have an Apple logo and it's just moving quickly along into the reboot and we are at the default slide to setup screen. So I'm just going to quickly go through this process and I will be right back once it's set up. All right, and right here in the setup process, you do have an option. You can actually select to restore your data from a Mac or a PC, or you can just set don't transfer apps and data right now and just go straight through the remainder of this setup right here, which is the option that I am choosing to do just because we actually do need to do something else to get our backup working on iOS 13. So for now, I'm just going to breeze through the rest of this setup right here. And uh, once we are done, I want to show you guys that inside of settings, it does confirm that we are now on iOS 13 on the exact same device here. So let's go ahead and swipe up and then we'll go inside of settings, general, and then about, and you'll see we're on iOS 13.5.1. And there is one problem. Now we actually do not have our data because we need to restore from our backup. However, the backups that are created on higher versions, i.e. the one we just made on iOS 14 beta, will not work on iOS 13. The backups do not work on lower versions. So, we need to modify it to essentially allow it to work and to bypass that restriction that's put in place by Apple to prevent downgrades. It's fairly easy, but uh, what I want you guys to do is just, if you're on a Mac, disconnect and reconnect your device to your computer and you need to navigate to your device screen inside of Finder and trust your device again. And uh, if you're on Windows, you can skip ahead because the steps are a little bit different and uh, just refer to the timestamps below to do exactly that. Okay, so here it is creating a backup right now of this device. I don't want that backup specifically. So I'm going to go inside of manage backups and this backup right here, I'm just going to delete it because this is just the clean backup that it made right now on iOS 14. So I'm just clicking on delete right there. And this is the one that we wanted that we created earlier. So go ahead and click it and then right click and show in finder. From there, double click inside of that backup and scroll all the way down to the bottom and look for info.plist, right click it, go open with, and then select other. And I want you to find your text edit application and open it with text edit. Now I want you to command F and search for product. You can search for this manually. It's not too far down. And where it says product version, change that string from 14.0 to 13.0 and then command S to save it or save it in the top menu bar and you can close out of it and you can close out of the finder window and then you can click OK. We are done with that on Mac. Now I'm going to show those on Windows how to actually do the exact same thing. So if you're on Mac, you can skip this stage. Okay, so for those on Windows, you're going to receive another trust prompt similar to what we had to do on Mac. So just go through that process, input your device's passcode, and then I want you to go to your search bar. So on Windows 10, it's just over here in the left, and these steps will be on downgradeios.com, and exactly where you need to go will be featured there as well. So don't worry if you don't get it right now from this video, you can navigate to that article and you'll get it as well. Now I want you to click on the search field and I want you to type in the percent sign and then type in app data percent. Now this is only if you've downloaded iTunes manually yourself from iTunes.com and set it up. Otherwise you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to type in the percent symbol and you're going to type in user profile in all caps and then followed by another percent and you're going to go inside of that directory or folder and if you don't find it in one you can go to the other as well but for me specifically I know that it's app data so that's where I'm going and then you're going to look where it says either Apple or Apple computer open it and then you're going to click where it says mobile sync click into backup click inside of your backup that you created, scroll all the way down to where it says info. So this is info.plist, right click it, and then click on open with, or actually hover open with, and then you're going to select choose other app, 
if you don't see WordPad already. And once you do that, you're going to click on more apps where it shows this little pop-up window, scroll all the way down until you actually see that there. Now, I already have it selected. I already selected it previously, so it's at the top for me. It won't be at the top for you. And then go ahead and click on OK. And here, I want you guys to search where it says product. So you can do Control F or you can just scroll down and you're looking for the third product mention here and it's product version and right where it says string change that from 14.0 to 13.0 and then you can just save that so file save and you can close out of it and you can continue with these steps so inside of either finder or itunes again navigate to your device screen and then click on restore from backup and select the backup that we created previously and then just modified and click on restore and it's going to go through the backup restore process to get all of your data back onto your device. If you get any sort of issue or error about it not being compatible, that's because you did not modify it properly. All we really need to change is just that product version string and it shouldn't take too long unless you have a lot of data. If you do, then it will take a while and just remain patient. Again, same thing goes here. Do not unplug, do not interface with your device, just let it do its thing. All right, so now we just have an Apple logo and we're at the lock screen. So I'm going to swipe up. It says restore completed. Let's go ahead and tap on continue there. And it asks us to connect to a network. So I'm going to select mine right now. And now it wants me to set up phase ID because I didn't do that previously. And also passcode, I didn't do that. So I'm just skipping through all of this right now for the purpose of this tutorial. And we're just going through that and swiping up. And now you can see that the wallpaper has changed to what I was on when I was on iOS 14 when I created that backup. And inside of the notes application here, we will have our note as well. So you can see that we have this note right here. We will get this back. That's what we created previously at the beginning of this long tutorial. So it works absolutely epic and again if that wasn't enough proof you can see that the home screen layout is the same just without those widgets that we had on iOS 14 because of course they're now no longer available on iOS 13. So guys, that is how to downgrade back to iOS 13 while maintaining all data. I really hope this helped you out. If it did, again, please consider subscribing. Stay tuned for more coverage on iOS 14 and jailbreaking. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.